is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Amen. Then they said unto him, uh, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I told you already, you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciple? Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. Lord, give us wisdom to answer that would, to, that would close the mouth of the, of the gainsayers. It said, then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. Um, what, what's going on here is the blind man is seeing and they don't like it. And I'll tell you a little why, why they don't like it. Um, is there anybody on the, the, the computer up there? Anthony, can you get on that computer just for a moment? Just for a moment. Shoot something up for me. E-S-R-E-F. And the last name is A-R-M-A-G-A-N. Esref Armagan. E-S-R-E-F-A-R-M-A-G-A-N. Um, and go to uh, photo gallery or go to pictures, um, the portraits he's, he's painted. Yep. Just kind of, if you could enlarge that a little bit. All right. Well, that's, that's him that's him up there, and that's him down here. But here are the paintings. Here are the paintings that he's painted. Um, you can see the house up there, the, the sea creatures. That's good, Anthony. That's, that's fine. It's, it's kind of giving them a perspective. So let me tell you something about this, this fellow right here. Um, he was born in 1953. Um, he is an internationally acclaimed artist whose uh, works have been exhibited in galleries in Europe, Asia, North America. He was Turkish-born. Uh, he, he is a painter. He paints landscapes, still lifes, and portraits in bright colors. His mastery of perspective and scale, light and shadow, is stunning, particularly because Esref was born completely blind. He is completely blind. But look what he's painted. Completely blind. Born in 1953 in Turkey, but yet look at his portraits. Look at the paintings that he's... As a child, uh, Esrif noticed people constantly warning, about, warning him about his surroundings, but they never, they never seemed to warn un others about their surroundings and so when he talked to his parents about it, he learned that other people could see what he could not see. He reached out to his father for help. His father patiently answered his questions, introduced him to objects, shapes, and textures. Once Ephra's father gave him a piece of paper, uh, a butterfly, to help him understand their shapes. While holding the model, Ashraf drew the shape to test the accuracy of his perception. He began to etch it on a cardboard to make indentions so that he could then trace it with his fingers. He then practiced drawing lines to represent the butterfly outline. With practice, he eventually mastered the ability to draw and color butterflies and other objects. As his skill developed, he began to paint on canvas. When he heard his paintings appear to be flat and unrealistic, he discovered light, L-I-G-H-T, acts on objects and creates shadows and shades. Can you see it back there? He learned to create shadows and shades to give depth to the picture. And he was able to incorporate this into his art, and, and he recreated what others described uh, as beautiful portraits. Afris, uh, Esrif later learned about scale and perspective and was able to add depth and dimension. Then in 1994, he participated in an international exhibit on visual impaired artists, and he began to catch the attention of not only the art community, but also researchers and scientists. And they began to study him on the human perception. Everyone say perception. Amen. So light and perception. 
uh, during brain scans that, that were conducted while he was drawing, they observed that his visual cortex illuminated as if he were seeing. The experience proved that vision was a function of perception regardless of how it is experienced. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Amen. And so seeing is not necessarily perceiving. Seeing, just because you can see something, doesn't mean that you can perceive it. And, and this goes back to Isaiah 6, 9, where Isaiah says, Hearing, uh, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. It's ability to perceive. I think what's happening a lot of times in our world today is we see a lot of stuff, but we don't perceive what's going on. We got, we've got with this young people now and the cell phones and, and all, the, all the media that they've got, and they are seeing a lot of things, but they're not able to perceive what is right and what is wrong. They have seared their conscience with a hot iron. Amen. Oh, me. Maybe we're amongst the young people and it's happening to us. Amen. We've got, I, we, we need to perceive and understand what, what is the spirit behind it that's motivating it. Can somebody say amen? We've got to be able to perceive what's motivating what's behind it. That's what the whole lesson about is about here about John chapter number 9. You have a blind man healed and then you have some Pharisees that are, that are uh, a little bit concerned and, and, and uh, they, they haven't perceived exactly what's going on. Amen. So, so this is what we're talking about, is the ability to, to see it. John opened his gospel with reference to light. If you go back, we already, we already hit it, but let's go back one more time. In John chapter 1 and verse 1 through 5, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So for a blind man to be able to draw these pictures, he had to have a perception, amen, beyond belief to be able to draw the pictures. Isn't that amazing? It is absolutely amazing. All right? Light is a powerful symbol in the Bible. Um, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it gives us biblical imagery. Um, when, you, when, you, when something lights up in your mind or, or the light goes on, you can see what's being written, what's being said. Uh, the light, this light, amen, it recalls the power of God's presence to bring life and understanding, to warm our spirits, to illuminate our path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It illuminates where we're at, amen, and it helps us to come out of darkness, to come out of ignorance to come out of sin and to walk in the path of righteousness after Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. It was the light of God's word that enables you, amen, to come out of sin and to walk in righteousness. Walk right with God. Amen. Hallelujah. When you look at uh, chapter number 8, uh, Jesus declared in verse number 12, I am the light of the world. Bam, he came to illuminate. He came to give perspective. Amen. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Everyone say life. Amen. It's that perception that you're not just living, you are living an abundant life. Amen. There's a vast difference, my friend, between living and living with abundance of life. Living is just going through the motions. It's just doing every day what we need to do. But when we get abundant life, now we walk understanding our purpose. 
And because I have a purpose, I'm not just waking up in the morning and a whole hum. Amen. I'll wake up in the morning excited, ready to go because I have a purpose today. I have something God called me to do. Come on, my friend. There's a vast difference. If you don't have purpose, you, hand, you tend to hit the snooze and roll over. But when you have a purpose to get up, amen, it causes you to rise up and to accomplish whatever it is that you have to do. Amen. We need, we need that light in our life. Can somebody say amen? John 9, so John 8 reveals Jesus' light. John 9 reveals precisely what happens when people encounter, when they encounter the light. You see, in 9, we start the story with Jesus and his disciples seeing a man who was born blind. Verse number 1. Amen. There's a man that is born blind. Amen. And, and much like Job's friends, the disciples assumed that he was blind because of sin and, and, and he suffered the consequences because of his sin. You see this in John Chapter uh, uh, 1, verse number 2. So you read in verse 1, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Whenever we see something we don't understand, we try to find, we try to find an answer of why it's what it is. Amen. Why this? Why, I mean... What happened? What caused this? Why? All right? We try to see the why of it. Amen. And, and, and so we're, we're looking here. The, the, Jesus is responding to their question about sin, uh, that it's, it's not the sin of, of this man or the sin of his parents. Amen. There, there's something, you know, the, their theology, their theology of the understanding of God, that's why you come in Matthew chapter 5, and, and the Lord begins to go through the Beatitudes, blessed, because he wants to change the people's thinking. They've had, they've had a wrong thinking. They've, in their mind, they've, they've, they've had wrong conclusions when it comes to the Word of God. Amen. Some, something as complex and mysterious as human suffering, we cannot, we cannot explain it away with simplistic moralization. You know, well, the reason this has happened is because they're being disobedient. The reason this has happened because they're disobedient. The reason this, amen, that's, that's not always the reason. Matter of fact, you can go into the Old Testament and read it, and, and it's the Lord said, I, the Lord, have made the dumb and the deaf and the blind. Amen. If God made them, then there's a purpose that God plans to use uh, with the dumb, the deaf, and the blind. And this happened to be one man because in verse number 3, Jesus answered and said, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. That's, that's not what's going on here. It's not a morality issue. It's not a sin issue. There's something else going on. There is a light that wants to go on to reveal who Jesus is. Notice, Jesus goes on to say, but that the works of God, verse 3, should be revealed in him, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Just like in the beginning, amen, hallelujah, amen. In the beginning, God was shining light into chaos and into darkness, amen. Jesus came into, into our lives and precisely for the same reason that he could shine light into the chaos and, and the darkness of our lives. Amen. That's why Jesus came. He came that we might have light. And not just have light, but that we could have perception of why that light has come into our life. We've got to understand why light has... Why am I coming to church this morning? 
Amen. If you come to church today just because you're supposed to do that, then you'll walk out of here without a perspective of what you're called to do. But when all of a sudden you come in here and you have the light of the Word of God, amen, you have the light of the Holy Spirit, amen, and all of a sudden it illuminates to you, amen, perspective, then you can walk out of here differently than what you walked in. Because now you understand what's going on. What's at stake. There's more at stake than just going to church, my friend. We must be converted in order to convert the world around us. I sound like you're getting a little radical, preacher. Yes, we better get radical. Amen. Because we are the only light this world has. And if that light in us turns to darkness, what hope does our world have? It has absolutely none. If the church world becomes dark, our world has no hope. But if the light in us Amen. We'll illuminate and we'll understand why we're called to be light. When we walk out of this place, we will walk out allowing our light to shine that the world can see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Can somebody say amen? I know why I'm here. I'm here so people can see that Jesus is real today. Not just 2,000 years ago but He is real today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 So, looking at this blind man, there would be a lot of reasons of why, why, why. But Jesus stepped up to him and spit in some clay and smeared it in his eyes and told him, go and wash in the pool. <laughs> he went and washed in the pool and something happened. He had no eyes before, but now all of a sudden he come back from that pool and wash in his face and he can see. Hallelujah. He can, he can see how once was blind but now i see amen so the better question is not to not to ask why but to ask how 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 will god's work be revealed in and through our needs how it's not why do i have this problem why do i have this need one time i got so aggravated because i had a blowout i was so upset about that blowout that tire wasn't that old. Why in the world did it blow out? I'm not near the dealership I bought it from, so therefore, where I'm going, the warranty, I, I, had to take this, I had to buy a new tire, take this old blown out tire back, of which I'll not get the money for the new tire I'm buying. I'm so upset about the money I was going to have to spend that I failed to realize that it happened because there was somebody at that tire place that I needed to talk to about Jesus. One of, our, one of our preachers up where I'm at from, I should say not at, but where I'm from, a um, uh, well-known preacher, he uh, married one of the star girls, and uh, he was traveling out west. And you know there's a long stretch of highway where there's nothing out there in the middle of nowhere. And he was driving along out there, and he had a blowout. And uh, he got out of that car and he's like, Lord, why out in the middle of nowhere did, did I have to have a blowout? He happened to be sitting on a bridge. And so he got out and he started talking to the Lord and he wasn't really quiet. He wasn't aggravated. He wasn't mad. He was just like, God, I don't understand why. Don't understand why. I got a spare out of the trunk. Lord, I just don't understand why. He goes to changing that tire in a car when somebody taps him on the shoulder. Now he's out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and somebody taps him on the shoulder, he turns around, and there's this bum that was underneath that bridge. It was a backslidden apostolic. And he was under that bridge saying, God, would you send somebody to tell me there's hope? That I'm not lost and destined for hell. 
and that guy tapped him on the shoulder. He said, I heard you praying. He said, I was praying too that God would send somebody to me. And right there on the spot, they prayed him back through the Holy Ghost. Amen. God allowed, sometimes we're But the whole time we're asking that, we're, we're missing the how of what God is doing. Start looking for the how. How does God want to take and meet this need? How does God, what is God trying to do here? And look for the how, and you'll see something totally different. All right? You don't know what God's doing. Only eternity will tell what God's doing. When we look at bad things as somehow we've lost favor with God. And that's not true at all. Matter of fact, the Scripture teaches us that it rains on the just and the unjust alike. I mean, things happen. Not because you're sinning and not because you're bad. They happen. But there's something about a child of God that he's not alone and she's not alone when something happens. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. I'm not alone. So whatever's going on, God's trying to teach me. God's trying to show me. And I want to allow him to work in my life so I can have a better understanding. On the way to church this morning, I decided to hit 14 and come down 231. And I think I hit every red light coming into Montgomery this morning. I never hit every red light. I mean, surely one, two, or three, or at least half of them are green when I go through. But every single one of them was red. And I was, I'm, I'm, you know, studying the lesson, so I'm kind of grinning and saying, okay, God, I get the picture, I get the picture. I see what you're trying to say. Amen. So sometimes you get mad and say, well, I'll just run that one. You've never done that. It was, it was burnt orange. When you went under, it wasn't yellow and it wasn't red, you know. All of a sudden, you just, you just kind of sit back and you slow down and you stop. And it allowed me to talk to the Lord on the way to church. Okay, God, I get the picture. I understand what you're trying to tell me. Just because there's a red light doesn't mean something's wrong. You're just trying to, you're just trying to teach me a little bit about patience. I don't pray for patience, folks. Because tribulations work in patience. And I don't want any more trials than I've already got. And so I don't pray for patience. But if God wants to send patience, I'll try to endure. Because what it's had, it's finished work. It's, it, it only works for good in us. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So How? Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. I'm going to get bogged down here a minute. Uh, Romans 8 and 28 says this. And we know that all things work together for the good. Now we want to put a period right there. To say that all things work together for the good. It says, to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. It did not stop. It went on to say that it works together. Amen. If you but if you but recognize that light has come into your life, amen, that God has come in to do a work in your life, and that he called you according to a purpose, that all things work together for the good. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to say that sometimes I don't like how things are going. And I want to change how things are going. But I understand. Amen. That if my life is surrendered to Him and I've asked Him to order my steps today, then whatever happens today, I know God has a greater purpose than what I have. So many times people have lost jobs and thought the world had come to end only to realize that God had something better. But the only way to get them to something better is He had to take them out of where they were at. And so the whole time they're sitting fussing and cussing about losing their job, not understanding that God has created something better. Amen. Listen, 
sometimes we are unwilling to change because we don't have the light Amen. Because we don't have the perspective, we're not willing to change and allow God to do what He wants to do. Amen. <clears throat> so this, this, this painting up here, for those of you that didn't hear, this painting up here, all these paintings are by a blind man, a man born blind. He's never seen fish. He's never seen a house. He, he, he's never seen trees. He's never seen a boat. But somehow, he had the ability to perceive what it was. And today, as a renowned artist, amen, he's 71 years old right now. And uh, he's out of Turkey. And, uh, but he, he learned, amen, without eyes, born, born blind, he learned to perceive things. And he began to put it down on, on, on canvas so we could see it. Amen. All right, so now Jesus is trying to refocus the disciples uh, because this blind man uh, is, is, is miraculously healed and uh, John called Jesus and his miracles in the word signs, signs, S-I-G-N-S, because they pointed to his identity. These signs shall follow. They, Jesus had the signs because it pointed to his identity. In Mark, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. It marks your identity that you're different. There are signs that will follow you. Amen. While Jesus healed this blind man, amen, there were those around that did not. They did not believe now, now now listen so god formed man in genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 of the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils a breath of life and man became a living soul now he's echoing that again he takes clay amen spittle and he puts this clay in the eyes of, or in the eye sockets of this man tells him to go amen to this pool amen which which literally means scent and wash and and he washes he went he washed and he came seeing verse number seven he went and he washed and he came seeing verse number eight and nine the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that was blind said is not this he that sat at a begging verse nine and some said this is he others said he is like him but he said i am he I used to do anymore. Amen. Because my heart has been changed. I've had the light of salvation. I, oh, there's been a perspective that's been given to me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, he just kind of evaded the group and, and left. And uh, this man claims, I, I'm, I'm he. And there was a gasp that went through the crowd. As they looked at him and said, what happened to you? What happened to you? Did anybody ever say that to you? You come home from church, they say, what happened? Something happened tonight. What happened to you? you know, what happened to you? And so they couldn't find Jesus. So trying to make sense of this blind man seeing, they took him to the religious Pharisees, the professional Christians. He took him to the professional, I should say religious, not Christian. They weren't Christian. He took them to the professional religious leaders of the world. Amen. We want to make sense of us. We want to understand this. So tell us about this. And they, they the religious, began to say unto the blind man, What sayest thou that he that hath opened thine eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. I don't believe you were blind. And received his sight. 
So let's call his parents. And so they called the parents. Verse 20 through 23, his parents answered and said, We know that this, this is our son. He was born blind. But by what means he now see it? We know not. Or who hath opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age. They threw him under the bus. He is of age. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was, Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. They were worried about their position in church. So much so that they would not give an answer that Jesus had healed their son. How sad. How sad. Your son that was blind that now sees, he no longer has to beg. He can now work. He can live like everybody else. He can have a family like everybody else. He can have a life like everybody else. But you're so worried about position that you won't give a straight answer. Now, but Mark, you say politically correct. This is one of those examples of really, really, really politically correct. They were so concerned that, that, about their position that they, they tried to be political in their response. So they ask him in verse number 24, tell, tell the truth, what really happened? We know this man is a sinner. Fess up. Tell us what really happened. We know it's. We know this one. You're saying Jesus, the prophet, or whatever. Whatever you're. What, come on, tell us the story. Tell us. Tell us the truth. You ever get somebody you try to get them to tell you the truth, and they'll tell you this story. No, 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 no. That's too far fetched. Tell me the truth. And so they tell you this story. No, 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 no. That's not the truth. Tell me the truth. Anybody ever run up to somebody like that? Some people are such good liars. That you don't know if it's the truth or not. And so they're looking at this blind man that can now see. They say, come on, come on, tell us the truth. Your parents said you're blind, but what happened? How did it happen? What's going on? No, 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 we don't take it that Jesus spit on mud and put in your eyes and you washed the pool and now you see it. I don't believe that. Tell me something that's believable. <laughs> Well, you'll, you'll find that, that when, they, when they said this, this man got a little bit irate back to him, and, and he began to, <laughs> began to ask him, if I tell you again, you're going to become a disciple? <laughs> Smart Alec. They got so mad at him that the Scripture said they threw him out. Threw him out. They got so mad at him. They threw him out. And the scripture said in verse number 35 that Jesus heard they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he, the blind man that now sees, answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe him? And Jesus said to him, Ye have both seen him, and it is he who talk, who is talking with you. Then said the man that was blind that can now see, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Amen. And he worshipped him. Amen. You go on down to verse number 39, the next verse. And Jesus said, for judgment. Okay, disciples said, you know, what's all this about? Why? 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 If this man is not sin, then why is he blind? The Lord said, this is why he was blind. For judgment I am come into the world that they which see not might see and that they which see might be made blind. He said, I've come so the one who is blind can see and I've come for the one who thinks he's seeing that he is actually blind. Do you ever say... You ever say, oh, I understand it, and you didn't understand it one bit? Oh, sure, I understand that. I, I understand it. You have no clue. Huh? That's what 
He's talking about, he said, you claim to see, but you really don't see. That's why they have a thing called tests. Because you can say, yeah, I got it. But you take that test, and that test will reveal whether you do have it or not. Huh? Hallelujah. So we have a, we have a story here that we're looking at in the ninth chapter. The disciples could not see what God was doing in the world. The neighbors could not perceive if this was the same guy they had known before. The parents could not see past their fear of rejection. The Pharisees re refused to see that God was in their midst. The light was shining on all of them that day. All of them. But only the blind man could see. And he worshipped. He could see. And he worshipped. Hallelujah. I think sometimes we miss it when we come to the house of God. And we're given the opportunity to worship him. And we don't. We are missing what's going on. I'm not talking about when the music's playing. I'm talking about moments like right now. Where all of a sudden the, the weight of it is. I don't want to be a disciple. And not believe God. I, I, I don't want to be one of the neighbors. Amen. That, that refuses to see. I, I, I don't want to be the parents. That because of fear. They will not worship. I, I don't want to become one of the Pharisees. Or religious leaders. That refuse to recognize. That the almighty God has stepped into this service. Amen. To minister to hearts. Of men and women. And boys and girls. Amen. I'm here to tell you that. That, that my God can step in. And he can minister to whatever need. Is present. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Help me to see it. I believe a lot of the miracles that take place are because we've got to be able to see what God wants us to see. And if we can see what God wants us to see, then all of a sudden now we can operate the way He wants us to operate. You've taken all this time to train your children. Why? You want them to see things. You want them to understand things. And so you take time to train your children. So hopefully... One day they'll see what you want them to see and they'll hear what you want them to hear. I tell you, in my home, the last three weeks have been rough. You have to stick to your guns even when you don't want to stick to your guns. Why? Because there's a soul... That I want, to do, I want them to do right. I want them to walk right. I want them to think beforehand. Oh God, when you deal with me and punish me, and Lord, when you correct me, do I have the, do I have the same spirit? Says, Lord, I want to see what you want me to see. I want to understand what you want me to understand so that I can perceive what's going on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's hard to imagine a darker place than a Nazi, Nazi concentration camp. Yet in the winter of 1944, taken from a journal, a bright light of faith and courage flickered defiant in such a camp. Hugo Grin was 13 years old when he, his father, and 10,000 other Jews from the uh, Berhova ghetto were deported to Auschwitz. His grandparents, his little brother, were immediately gassed since there was no value to the, the regime. Hugo and his father were, were transferred to uh, a forced labor camp, L-I-E-B-E-R-O-S-E, -E -E, and put to work uh, constructing a resort town for the, the Nazi officers and their families. In the dark, cold, miserable place, Hugo witnessed a triumph of hope, a triumph of hope. And the, the resilience of faith. He later, he later recalls, although we had nothing like calendars, my father, who was my fellow prisoner there, took me and some of our friends to a corner in our barracks, and he announced that it was the eve of Hanukkah. Now, now to understand this, um, you have to go back. According to the Talmud, 
when Judas Maccabeus entered the second temple of Jerusalem, he found only a small jar of oil that had not been defiled by Antiochus. The, 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 the Epiphanes, the jar contained only enough oil to burn the candles for one day. But miraculously, the oil burnt for eight days until the consecration oil could be found and, and established and, and, and precedent that the, fest, the festival should last for eight days. So, so what happened was uh, Antiochus, was, he was a wicked man, and he defiled the temple. Um, uh, he, he brought false gods and set them up in the temple, um, I believe also he put a pig's head outside, slaughtered a pig and put a pig's head outside, which was in defiance to the Jews. And, and so when, 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 when Judas Maccabeus went into the temple to light the candle, there was only a small jar of oil enough to burn one day. And so he lit the candles in purification of the second temple, and it burnt. The candlestick burnt for eight days off of one day's oil. And so, Hugo's father produced a curious shaped clay bowl, began to light the wick, and immersed it in his precious, now melted, margarine ration. Before Hugo's father could recite the blessing, Hugo protested that this was a waste of food. He said his dad looked at him, then, then at the lamp, and he finally said, you and I have seen it as possible to live up to three weeks without food. Once we lived almost three days without water. But you cannot live properly for three minutes without hope. This is in the, in the Hanukkah book of celebrations. This actually happened in 1944. Hugo relayed the story, even how his dad said that candle was going back to that remembering that there was a jar of oil and remembering that there is a hope in Israel and remembering we might be in a concentration camp, we might be in a labor camp, but we know this one thing, that wherever we're at, if we have a God and we have light, if we have light, we have hope. Even Jesus is the light of the world, and he lit it that we might live an abundant life. Can somebody say amen? How do you understand? Can you perceive the light? Can you perceive what God is wanting to do for you and through you? John 1, 5. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Genesis 1, 3. Let there be light. Isaiah 9, 2. They walked in darkness. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commendeth light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, 1 John 1, 7, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Would you bow your head with me right now? Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to be that light that would come into my life, into our life, into this church. Lord, not only light, but that, that we could see, and that not only that we could see, but that we would have perception, that we would have understanding, that we could put the things together. Lord, in the spirit world, just like just like Esram, Lord, he's blind from birth. Lord, sometimes in the spirit world, we're blind. We can't see what you want us to see. You said, oh, you, 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 you told the, the religious folks, you can, you can foretell the signs of the day. If the sun goes down and it's red, you're gonna, it's, it's going to be wonderful. But if it comes up and it's red in the morning, take warning. You, 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 you've got, you can see the signs of the earth, but you can't see the signs of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, help us to perceive the signs of the time. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to you and to walk in obedience to you. Lord, I love you and I worship you and I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Amen. Could I ask you a question right now while the musicians are getting ready? Could I ask you a question? Would you stand? 
Would you stand for me? And I want you to do something. I want you to give God praise for the light that has come into your life. Would you just open your mouth? And would you vo vocally let hell know today that you are thankful for the light? Amen. I, I'm not saying, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. Let your faith declaration be said. Amen. It's mine, mine, mine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mine for all eternity. Amen. Open up your mouth and just begin to thank Him. Lord, I thank You. I thank You as a child that Your Spirit moved upon me. I thank You, Lord, for the light that shined and I realized I was a sinner and that I was lost. Thank You for the light and the revelation of what for repentance and baptism could do in my life. Lord, I thank You for that moment as that eight-year-old child as I went down in the waters of baptism in that old church. Lord, in that horse trough, I thank You that when I come up out of that water, my sins were washed away. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Amen. Some of you are not making your faith declaration because you can't see it. Don't be blind. Open your mouth and say, God, I praise you. I thank you. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. I want to do what you've called me to do. Hallelujah. So I open my mouth to declare it. I open my mouth to praise you, Lord. In thy precious, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, let everyone say amen. 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 I want to see it. I want to understand it. I want to walk in it. Amen. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. You may be seated. A little helper here today. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm getting ready to pray, I wonder what should I pray for now? I have my list, but what should I start praying? We can start our prayers with many things and our people, but the first thing we need to do is look in the mirror. Let's ask God to show us ourselves first. So we look in this bag, and I pull out, okay, let's pray for that man or that woman who said something mean to me. Maybe we should, we should start with that one. Well, maybe we should start with our pastor. Oh, help him, Lord. He just ain't doing right. <laughs> then we can pray for, oh, let's pray for our husband or maybe our wife. This ain't lining up today. We need a new job. We pray for a new job, but are we praying for the people that we need to minister on that job? What about that mean coworker? You know, she got on my last nerve. I don't feel like praying for her. Oh, let's pray for your neighbor that's getting on your nerve because they play that music so loud I can hear it from my bedroom window, 2 o'clock in the morning. I have done that. I have prayed for that person. I have prayed for that box to break. We pray for our nation. Our nation is in disarray. Oh, let's pray for some financial increases. We ain't got enough money. We never seem to have enough money. <laughs> Pray for our children. Keep acting up. I wonder why. Pray for our siblings. I know I grew up in the same household with them. I don't know why they're so different. But they are. But the number one thing we need. Look in the mirror. Let us ask God to show us our hearts and what we look like to him. Then we will find reasons to repent because our hearts are deceitful, according to Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know of it? The Lord searches the heart. He tries the reins, even give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. I'm going to step on some toes. Be prepared. There are denominations outside of Pentecost that believe once saved, always saved. Then there's another one that believes that you go to confession every week and you get your weekly communion wafer and your little wine. And then before you die, you call for the priest, and he comes and hears your last confession and anoints you with oil. And then before, when you leave this world, your family will pray for you often and light a candle and pray you out of purpose. We may not believe these things, but be mindful while we sit on a Pentecostal pew, feeling secure in Acts 2.38. We can have that same mindset of once saved, always saved. Feeling secure because we repented, we got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. This applies to me too. It's God's revelation that we stop being so comfortable in Acts 2.38, just sitting on a chair and traditionally coming to church. We may not be willfully sinning, but we're sitting down on just the experience we had in God. We need to move forward and work in the kingdom of God. Don't stop with the initial experience. Again, go back to my first sentence. Seek God and ask him to show us our reflection. What does he see in us? 
continue to pray. Let's, let's look in the mirror of our hearts to repent, seek God for the lives of others. Ask God to birth in you his will and his desire. Church, we need to pray. I don't, there we go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, a few announcements here this morning. Uh, today, right after church, in the foyer where uh, Journey's having a bake sale. It's not an auction. Everything is is priced. First come, first serve. Uh, no fighting, please. Uh, the, the bakers could bake you something uh, privately if you talk to them, and I'm sure we can get you something if you wanted something. Uh, this Saturday at 1 o'clock, the widows and widowers are going to be meeting for lunch at fried green tomato this saturday at one o'clock so if you're part of that group um be there amen good food uh the 29th march 29th is our good friday service six o'clock here at the church uh with the dinner no wednesday night service that week this week we'll have wednesday night service the week of uh easter and good friday we'll we'll have that wednesday transfer to uh friday so at 6 o'clock, and then we'll have uh, dinner that night as well. Um, the 31st is uh, Easter. Uh, we're going to have an Easter play, and pastor's going to uh, be preaching. Louisiana Men's Conference in April. Today is your last day to sign up, so make sure your name is on the sign-up sheet if you are wanting to uh, go. We'll get you the pricing information as soon as we get a head count of who all is going to be uh, participating if you've taken pictures if you've taken pictures um, those will be downstairs today uh, you can pick those up April the 14th is our steak dinner this is free they're going to be serving the kids during uh, regular Sunday school time if you would like to donate any hot dogs chips or cookies we'll have those um, turned in the Sunday before the 14th and uh, we'll get those. There's, there's going to be a sign-up sheet for sides for the steak dinner, potato salad, mashed potatoes, baked beans, angel eggs, right? Some deviled eggs, some cakes and pies. So uh, make sure uh, you sign up for that. We're going to have a good time. Like I said, during Sunday school hours, we're going to be feeding the kids um, those, those hot dogs. So uh, if you'd like to donate those, uh, you can do that on the 7th. And I believe we're having a health fair, amen, at the end of uh, March. Just like to. Um, Over here. Come, 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 come. Can you hear me now? Okay. So we're having, we called it the health fair before, but we're going to call it the community care fair because it's going to incorporate a lot of things that we're going to be bringing to the church. And that's April 28th from 12 to 3. So we'll have some more announcements. But I talked to the American Red Cross. They will be coming. And depending on how many pints of blood we give, um, you will sign up for that. Last time we had a really great turn up, uh, turnout for the blood drive. Well, the American Red Cross was not the one, but they're, they're, they're here this year. So they said, that depending on how many units they get, they will write a check to the church to one of our projects. So that's extra income for, for the church. We have projects all the time. So Ashley has another one that she wants to tell us about, the honorarium from her organization. So y'all know I work with Area Agency on Aging for those that are over the age of 60 or disabled. Um, but also have a side job with um, area health initiatives. Basically, I'm a community health worker. We go do events. Um, my job has offered an honorarium. If we have 25 people to show up, we get $250 a 
$250 check to our church. $250 is a lot. But if we have 50 people show up, we get $500. I believe there's about 50 people in this congregation. So April 28th, if we can get 50 people, 50 adults, to go sign their name, because they participated, walked over there. So just know on that Sunday when we have this community help fair, there's lots of good and free stuff. Um, I'm sure y'all have been to events where y'all can go table to table to table to pick up stuff. Y'all don't have to sign up for nothing. You can just look and keep walking or whatever. But just show up because our church can get $500. Okay? See y'all then. Thank you. But also, thank you so much. Also remember the community care fair. Bring your friends that day, your neighbors, whomever. It was a good time for them to come to church and hear the word of God. Okay, and then participate in our community care fair. We will have the fire truck for the kids. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the firehouse to come. So we're trying to make sure we have something for everyone. Thank you. All right. Don't forget to come and stop by. If our ushers could make their way at this time, uh, take up this morning's tithes and offerings, we're going to have a special offering. It's going to be in a green bag. Uh, this is for our global missions. Uh, so please give to global missions. Um, this is going to go direct to uh, them. So we got our, our regular offering is in red. Our global missions is in green. So uh, make sure you are putting your, uh, your monies in the right bag. Amen. If we can all stand all across the house, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer before the praise team comes one more time. Amen. I feel good in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, I ask you to touch these missionaries and, and their mission, your mission, God. And I ask that you bless them and bless this offering and use it for your kingdom in Jesus name amen 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 you may bring your your offering at this time
salvation today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Salvation today is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus today. Do you have the victory? Do you have the victory? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got the victory. Amen, 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 amen. I've got the victory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. There's a lot going on today. So Billy said to put our order in. Billy, I want something with no calorie, no sugar, something will help me to lose weight. Does anybody know what that is? No, you said you'd bake it. You can't find it. Now, you promised me you'd bake it. That don't work that way, sister. You're praying amiss that you might consume it on your own lust. Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Sister Smith, what you didn't mention is last time we did the health fair that they told us from the blood mobile that our church gave more blood than the largest church here in town when we parked there. When they parked there, they got more donations here out of this group. <clears throat> that means, yes. You need helpers. Yes. 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 And, um, huh? Somebody's volunteering the youth. <clears throat> um, it's an opportunity. Uh, for you to ask questions. It's an opportunity for you to receive information. Um, I don't know. Did we contact Ashley? Where'd you go? Did, did, did we contact a lawyer also? Will there be a lawyer there to answer the question of the difference between, between wills and trusts? And will they tell the difference between trust and a will? I got a couple people that are asking that question. Do they do a trust or do they do a will? Okay. All right. So we're trying to get somebody here because we have several of you that have questions about wills and trusts and, and how to do what's the best for you to do. Uh, if you have unrelented resources, if you have a plethora of resources, of course, the trust is the best way. You have to pay beforehand, but immediately upon your death, everything's given to. The opposite, if you do a will, after your death, then it has to probate. And so that's when the money goes out. So you just have to decide, do you want your family to get all of it, or do you want the lawyers to get some and everybody else to get some at the back end of it? So it's just a, answer, a question that you have to answer. I think a trust can be set up for about $1,500. Okay, get with, get with these two ladies and look. 
yeah, get with Ashley and 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 uh, uh, Sister Smith on that. Um, <clears throat> there was an old song written in 1942 that uh, later by the quartets was made a very popular song, and it went something like this: Troublesome times are near, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now's at stake. Humble your heart to God, safe from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christian awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpet will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet him in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be all oh, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all cares. Rising up in the skies, telling this world goodbye. Home where we then shall fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets going to sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. The scripture tells us, the Spirit of the Lord, Jesus said, is upon me to, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. The Spirit of the Lord, amen, has anointed me, Jesus said, to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are oppressed. In the Bible, if you hang on to where I'm going, I need to lay a foundation. Oil... Oil, O-I-L, oil, olive oil, was a widely understood symbol of the Holy Spirit, or what we call the Holy Ghost. Amen. In that, it said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed. That's what they would do with an oil. They would take the oil and they would anoint the priest. They'd take the oil and they'd anoint the king. They'd take the oil and they'd anoint the sacrifice. It was that process of anointing. And that's why we understand and it's widely understood that the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when we read in Matthew chapter number 25, in verse number 1, he said, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. It says, They that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, and behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then those virgins arose, all ten of them. They trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil that our lamp, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Go to them that sell it and buy your own. That's pretty selfish. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, 
For ye know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. They would take that oil. They would take that oil. They would take that oil. They'd pour that oil into their lamp. I have a couple at home that I bought when I was in Nazareth. I have the wick. Pour that oil into them, and that wick will soak up that oil, and you light that wick, and it'll, it'll burn as long as there's oil in that bowl. But the moment that that oil runs out of that bowl, it'll suck that oil up the wick, and once it's burnt the oil, that light goes out just like that. Amen. It's that process, amen, of having the lamp. You're the vessel. Amen. We're the vessel. We've got to have the Holy Ghost in us to keep us the light of the world. And it sounds like this is carrying over a little bit from this morning's Sunday school lesson. It's the light, amen, that we have. And so he's telling us, he's saying there were ten virgins, the bridegroom was coming, and they wanted to be with the bridegroom, and, and so five were smart, and they took extra oil with them. They had extra oil with them. And at midnight, the cry came forth, and they woke up, they trimmed their lamps, and a couple of them tried to light the lamps. Five of them tried to light the lamps, and it wouldn't light. They looked into the bowl, and there's no oil in there. Because there's no oil, they can't get a fire started. Amen. They turned to the one to have the oil, and they said, give us of your oil that we can have oil too. And they said, ah. This is something you've got to have on your own. He meant my oil. <laughs> he meant my oil. There's some things we've got to be selfish about, church. And that's about the Holy Ghost and fire. He meant I've got to have my own. He meant you've got to have your own Holy Ghost and fire. I'm telling you, you can't go to heaven on your parents' Holy Ghost and fire. And you can't go to heaven on the preacher's Holy Ghost and fire. He meant you've got to have your own Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And so he tells them, he said, listen, even the five that know you can't have oil, he said, you go out and, 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 and you go to them that sell and you buy, buy for yourselves your own oil. Do you remember the story of Achan? Does anybody remember the story of Achan? I got a couple of people shaking their heads yes. Does anybody not remember the story of Achan? You don't remember reading it? It's in the book of Joshua. They've come over and the marched around the walls of Jericho and they shouted and the walls fell down flat. Man, they're excited. There's revival. Things are happening. They just got back from Youth Congress. Man, they're shouting and they're running the aisles and they're on cloud nine. They said the next city we're going to go to is Ai. So they get, they get going towards Ai. And, and as they're going towards Ai, Joshua says, I'm going to send out some spies. The spies come back and just said, two Send two or three thousand men. That's it. That's all you're going to need, and we'll get the victory. So he sent three thousand men up there to Ai to conquer them, and Israel ran from before the face of Ai, and I believe it was thirty-two people died. And I'm telling you, their celebration from Youth Congress dwindled real fast. Joshua hid his face to the ground crying and weeping because of those men who died. The Lord said, get up. Get up. Get up. He got up. He said, sin's in the camp. Somebody here sinned. Tomorrow I want you to call them by family. A little bit while ago I asked everyone just raise your hands and begin to, begin to thank the Lord for the light that came into your life. And I had some people. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of people around me. The Lord says, you call them out by tribe, you call them out by family, and then you call them out by household. You talk about being called out. He come to Aegis and said, son, give God glory. He couldn't. 
He couldn't praise God because he knew that he was the one that had taken stuff that wasn't his. He had taken gold and silver and a Babylonish garment that he was told not to touch. He meant not to take gold and silver belonged to the Lord. The Babylonish garment was to be destroyed. He took those and buried them in his tent. He said, I can't, I can't praise God. There's a weight on my arm. I can't praise God. I found the times that I can't raise my hands and love the Lord. It's because something isn't right in here. Something isn't right on the inside. But if I can get that right on the inside, it becomes easy to say, I love you, Jesus. I'll worship you, Lord. And I don't care who hears me. Hey, my God is good to me. Oh, He's so good to me. Oh, more than all this world to me, my God is good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When all of a sudden you get your heart right, you can begin to worship the Lord. Come on. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. Amen. Listen, if you can't worship God, you better check your heart because you are created to worship Him. And if you can't worship Him, it's because you're worshiping something else that you're not supposed to be worshiping. Amen. Can I, can I just tell you, amen, there was five foolish virgins that they ran out of oil. They didn't have enough Holy Ghost. They didn't have enough oil that when the bridegroom came, amen, He said, go out and buy for yourself. I would urge you today, along with myself, amen, to find a place at an altar and say God I want to be able to worship you and I want to make sure I have enough oil in my lamp that if that trumpet sounded today amen I'd be ready to go are you ready to go do you know that if the trumpet sounded right now that your feet would leave this ground South Bend Indiana they put that airport in and they were testing some of those new fighter jets Amen. And on, on that Friday night, uh, uh, they were having a rally. And, and this was in one of our apostolic churches. They were having a rally. And, and Brother Mailer was there. And, and he said, one of, those, one of those jet fighters flew over the church about the time we were worshiping. Said it hit that sonic barrier. What it called? Boom! He said those preachers on that platform, that church jumped. Said one preacher had a foot up trying to get the other one off the ground because he thought the trumpet sounded and he was worried that he was being left behind. He went, come on church, we can laugh about that. But if the trumpet sounded right now, are my feet going to leave this ground? And am, I, am I going up? Amen. And when that trumpet sounds, or is there something inside of my heart? Lord, help me to clean out my vessel. Help me to get out everything that's not supposed to be there. Help me to repent, to be baptized and washed by your water. And then let me put the oil in. Let me have the oil, Lord, so that when you come, my lamp is full. Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? If Jesus came right now, are you ready? Amen. Are you ready if Jesus came right now? Amen. No man knows the day nor the hour. Amen. The Scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Amen. Starting at verse 16 into chapter 5, verse number 2, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore Comfort one another with these words. But of the time and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Even Jesus is coming. Even just like these virgins. He came at midnight. Five were wise. They had oil. Five were foolish because they didn't have what it took to get out. They missed it. They missed it. They missed it. What a horrible thing 
to miss out. What a horrible thing to miss out. To not make it. Amen. Amen. To know that you're going to a place where there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Are you ready, my friend? Are you ready, my friend? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 51. We say it many times at, at funerals. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. Amen. And the strength strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that your victory today, amen, is in Jesus Christ. If you want oil today, it's in Jesus Christ. Come on, buy some oil. Whatever it takes to get some oil before you leave this house, make sure you have oil in your vessel. Therefore, my beloved brethren, verse 58, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. That your labor is not in vain. Now we beseech you, brethren, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa! In the mouth of two or three witnesses. Here's another scripture. We've got four scriptures now. We've got the ten virgins telling us. Uh, amen. We've got Thessalonians telling us. We've got Corinthians telling us. We have Second Thessalonians telling us. Amen. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. By our gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled. Neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us. As the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is a he is God remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things and now ye know what withholden that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken uh, 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 taken out of the way what is he saying second Th thessalonians uh, you know the times are troubling it's not time for your oil to run out uh, you know the problems that are going on in our world it's not time to let your oil run low uh, you know the problems that you're having in your family it's not time to let your oil get low uh, you know what problems you're having in your marriage uh, it's not time to let your oil get low. If anything, now you are encouraged to buy, 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 buy. Whatever it takes, get the oil of God. Get the oil of God inside. Amen. Because that's what it's going to take to get us out of here. I've got to have you, Jesus. I've got to have you, Jesus. I've got to have the anointing. I've got to have the anointing. Hallelujah. Preacher, what do I do, preacher? I tell you what you do, you repent. Right now you repent of everything. Lord, what drained my oil out of me, I repent. I ask you to forgive and I ask you to cleanse. Amen. If you haven't been baptized, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the washing of your vessel so that you are ready to receive that anointing, that oil that comes from above. We need the oil. Today, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. 
with that anointing and that oil. Fill me up. Years ago, it was a Sunday night service. Keith Clark stepped to the podium and he said, just for a moment, assume that you had never you had never repented and you had never been filled with the Holy Ghost. Just for a moment, just think of yourself as coming to the Lord for the first time. He said, I wonder how long it will take you before you can again receive the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm not talking about that faith stuff that fake stuff. See my tie, tie my tie. Sit a Honda, ride a Kawasaki. He, I'm not talking about that fake stuff. He said, I wonder how long it would take you before all of a sudden that Holy Ghost began to, began to birth up out of your belly and out of your, out of your mouth began to flow rivers of living water again. There was about 36 of us the state after that service and prayed and prayed and prayed. There was such a boundness in that service and we prayed. Why? Because we wanted the fresh oil. I don't want to be without oil. Come on, my friend. If there's ever time you don't want to be out of oil, it's right now. We don't know when He's coming. We don't know what He... Are you full of oil right now? Amen. If you could just raise your hands right now, would the Holy Ghost begin to flow inside of you like it did that very first time? Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Let it, let it cleanse out of you and let the Holy Ghost begin to roll inside of you. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost again. My friend, you can't afford to have an empty vessel. You've got to have the oil in it. Oh, God. Forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with Your Spirit. Fill us with Your Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, that's right. Come on, that's right. Reach out to Him right now. Let that Holy Ghost flow. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let it flow. Let it flow. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let the Holy Ghost flow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Come on, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Come on, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, breathe on your people, Lord. Breathe on your people. Come on, breathe, Lord, on your people today. I worship you. I love you, Lord. I want that Holy Ghost. I don't want my vessel to be empty. I've got to have oil. I've got to have oil. I've got to have oil. Hallelujah. Come on, friend. Come on. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I need the living. I need the living. I need the living. Hallelujah. Come on, that's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Be loosed. Be loosed in the spirit. Be loosed in the spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, my friend. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Let it flow. 
Aleluia, aleluia, aleluia. Out of your belly, out of your belly.